Sunbelt Conference on ESPN Plus. From Monroe, Louisiana, and inside Fent Ewing Coliseum. Good to see the pep band back in the house. Alongside former ULM coach Mike Vining, I'm Chris Harris. As tonight, first of a two-game weekend series between the Red Hot Texas State Bobcats. Ending a six-game road trip, ULM. They've been so unlucky so far in conference play. Coach, two teams, kind of opposite trajectory so far. Well, they are. You know, the Bobcats, as you said, went on the road, are three and one, and played the top teams, your top pick teams in the, in the conference. ULM started off at home, had a great uh, first two games, won them, and then they've kind of had some bad luck. They've lost last second shots. They've lost different ways, but it'll be a good game here tonight. 56 all-time meeting between these two schools on the men's hardwood as ULM has that 31-24 advantage, 19-4 in games played here at ULM. And in San Marcos, their last meeting, a 20-point win last year on January 3rd. The starting five for Texas State. You have a very veteran-leading club as Mason Harrell and Caleb Asbury, both their leading scorers, combined for 63 last weekend in their sweep of Little Rock. One of the most veteran teams in the Sun Belt for ULM. Two guys that are right now leading the way, Karimo Zier and Russell Harrison. Those two both averaging 13.8 points per game. Josh Nicholas has been a really big spark since conference play has started. He's averaging double figures in conference play. The head coach for Texas State, interim head coach, is Terrence Johnson. He's a New Orleans native, by the way. Got a, uh, a bachelor's in microbiology from Southern <laughs> University. What a great year to have a microbiologist as your head coach. He's the interim coach. There's uh, head coach Keith Richard of the ULM Warhawks, his 11th season at the helm. Coach, what are you looking for tonight? Well, it's going to be a slow-paced game if they if they play to the, the Bobcats' pace. You know, they like to come down and make you play defense. One of the teams that's going to make you play 20 to 25 seconds of defense every time, and that has a tendency sometimes to make the offense of the other team shoot a little bit quicker when they do get the ball. ULM will be trying to break that to make them uh, shoot a little quicker without a great shot and also to get their good shot. Bobcats are noted for their defense so far in the conference play. On your screen, Glenn to it. Steve Devine, Christopher Mario are the officials. This is a Texas State team that plays great defense. Maybe one of the best defending teams ULM has seen this year, and they get a steal on the opening possession. Yeah, trying to get it inside there for two. He had his man on his hip, and uh, Harrison was trying to get it to him, but they, the Bobcats did a great job of help side defense and, and picked it off behind him. It's Mason Harrell with the basketball. He is their starting point guard, averaging Three assists, 13 points a game so far, and an offensive foul, a moving screen will be called immediately against Texas State. It'll be on, on Mason Harrell. You know, they're going to they're have a lot of movement. They're going to be uh, screening as you hand off a handoff screen and then cut into the basket, and they just got him a little a little aggressive there. Ariola eight feeds over to Russell Harrison. Transfer in from Clarendon College. I don't think we've seen his best basketball. You know, Small is 6'8", and he's de defending him, so he's going to be long and lean and be right up on him. He's got to work to get a shot. Nicholas finds those here in the corner. Tough three off the side of the backboard. And with four on the shot clock, Texas State will get it back. This is kind of what we were expecting. Looking at the, the metrics, Texas State ranks 350th in the country in tempo. <laughs> they're they're going to make you play defense. I mean, you know, that's that's a, a lot of times, you know, the players, are, you get in a hurry to come down and get a shot. You take the first shot instead of the best shot. They're going to make you play defense. Asbury has it out front. From small back to Harrell. Harrell listed just 145 pounds at six foot one. Long two on the way. Maybe he was partially deflected there by Ozier. And Olenade. Finds Ozier down the floor. They'll bring it back out and reset things. Yeah, he, he pitched it ahead trying to trying to get down and get an easy basket <laughs> before that defense gets set up because they get after him. Nicholas guarded by a taller small. Nice move. And a shot off the mark. Rebound pulled down by Sule. Yeah, that's that's a shot that uh, Nicholas looks for. See, that's set that screen in on uh, Olenay. They were... They, they get after him. Sule in the post. And this is the shot. You know, they're, they're going to 
make the clock run, and they feel like that there's nothing bad can happen to them when they have the ball. You can't score, the only they can if they get the shot. It's a little far out for him, he needs to give it up. Let somebody else go for it. For Tui got that one to go. Chris Efratui had a really nice game on Friday against Arkansas State. 14 points, six rebounds, two blocks. When you see him do something like that, you see his, his potential. Yeah, you know, he, he can score, but that's unusual to see him hit that shot. A lot, of, a lot of times he doesn't get in that position. I think they've just got him pushed off the block. He likes to get on a block where he can go either way. And a banked in three is <laughs> by Kayla Basberry to start the scoring for Texas State. You see that 37% from three comes in fourth in the Sun Belt. Look at the metrics, their three-point percentage per possession, 11th in the country. Well, they, they, they make sure they get a good shot every time. Almost a turnover there. They, they're having to dribble it into there. You know, they set that screen, uh, Harrison did, and was and rolled out instead of to the basket, was looking for that three, but they did a good job of recovering. So he was trying to take it to the basket, and they got a hand on it. You know, they try to step in front of you at, as you get ready to cut. So you almost got to go around them or got to push them out of the way. Great job of jumping out and picking up then. Two on the shot clock. Tough shot from Nicholas. And here comes Texas State on the offensive. Four categories. They're top 100 in the country defensively. Numbers just go on and on. Small, top of the key. Three is good. He's a 39% three-point shooter. And He's off to a hot starting conference. Six of his first eight from three for Small. <laughs> that was a good shot. He was wide open. But I was a little surprised to tell you the truth because it was a, a little bit quicker in the shot clock than they normally shoot. But, you know, they're not going to turn down a really, really good shot. But they look they look to make you play defense. Globetrotters three there from Harrison. No good. And Asbury comes down with a rebound. You know, sometimes that, that pressure defense bumping and, and any time you get close to the basket, it'll make you take a step off of your comfort zone to put one up. Sule spinning with that left hand. Well, he made a big move. It just didn't get it to go, but they come up with the offensive rebound. Asbury, good move on Nicholas to the baseline. High up off the glass, no good. And his own miss, and he puts it in. Asbury, the junior from Pflugerville, Texas. He's the reigning Sunbelt Conference Player of the Week. Had 20, uh, average 20 and a half points a game, six rebounds, two assists in their sweep of Little Rock, which may have been the most impressive uh, performances we've seen this year in the conference. And again, you know, all that's on the road, the things that he did. Travel called on Efrit Tui. Well, the bank is open so far at Bent Ewing Coliseum, Texas State on top. Welcome back inside Bent Ewing Coliseum, the huddle for head coach Keith Richard. Texas State out to a 8-2 lead as we've uh, 
It's hard to believe it's almost February. <laughs> it, it's getting it, late early, as they say. It, it, it sure is. You know, and, and with all that's happened this year, you know, our, our chance to talk to a couple of ULM players yesterday talking about what all has happened, you know, that, that you just, nobody could prepare for it but, it. but everybody was going through it. And it was really amazing when they talking about they were having to live in a, in a hotel here because the dorms were months. ready. Yes. Tough shot underneath is good by Soule. And he's fouled, so a chance for the three-point play and extend their lead even more. Yeah, we want to give a, a shout-out to Russ Harrison and Kareem Ozier, two fantastic young men. Had a chance to speak with for about an hour last night and sharing their experience during uh, a season they'll certainly never forget. <laughs> you know, their first their first visit to our first time to be in Monroe. And uh, and the dorm wasn't wasn't finished. We'd had a, a tornado come through and tear a lot of things up. Then they go to a hotel and then have another storm and electricity is off for three days. And you know, I'm sure they're wondering, what are they? What have they come into? But in, they talked about the positive of how how uh, the, the, they got closer together as a team as uh, Ozier just carried that one to the basket. Ozier from Racine, Wisconsin. He saw snow down here and everybody overreacting and he got a, a lot of humor out of that. <laughs> he thought he was getting away from snow. Small to Asbury, the reigning Sun Belt Player of the Week. Three on the way, good, and a chance for the four-point play here as Asbury looks back towards their bench. Well, and Nicholas, that extends the lead to 10. Yeah, Nicholas just got a little, little aggressive on that one. That's very an impressive uh, career so far as a junior, though, this year. As Olin Aid checks out of the ball game. Elijah Gonzalez, sixth man for ULM, checks in. But in his third 20-point game last Saturday with 23, a career-high five threes in their sweep of the preseason favorite Little Rock. We were talking earlier, Texas State picked fifth in this division. And they're off to the best start in, in this division, this league. And, and you know, it, it, it's amazing. It, if they'd been at home, it would be good, but uh, they were on the road for all four games, and the one they lost was in overtime. So they, they're off to a great start. Harrison pump fakes on small, five on the shot clock. Double team, he has it blocked by Soule, and here comes Texas State. Harrell fades, no. And Ozier, who rebounds well for a small guard, comes down with it. Yeah, it's amazing. You look under there and look for the big guy, and it's Ozier got it. It's not Nicholas knocks that one down. Nicholas, through non-conference play, was averaging about five points per game. He's averaging 13 so far in conference play. He had a big 23-point performance a couple of weeks ago at UT Arlington. What's been the difference with Nicholas? Well, I think he's got healthy, and, uh, you know, Coach Richard was playing him early, and he, and he got had a couple of good games, and he just gave him a lot more playing time, and I think he got his confidence back. Sule pushes the lead back to 10. And Sule has five points so far. This game playing at the pace that Texas State wants, and a pass from Harrison to Nicholas too high. Nicholas can certainly jump, but not that high. Thomas Howell checks in for ULM. Big game for him. Yeah, a lot of them coming Saturday. in. Yeah, a lot of them coming in with a little rest now. Yeah, I know Coach Richard likes to to give the guys that he's going to pin on later on in the game some early playing time just to let them kind of get their legs under them and and get ready to play. And I'm sure Coach Johnson does similar to the same thing. When Scott comes in for Texas State, well as Marlon Davis, who's their top assist man. He's similar to Elijah Gonzalez, that sixth man, the point guard. He's travel, travel, yeah. He, travel <laughs> called on Scott. He couldn't make up his mind which way he was going to go. Such a, of course, Texas, a rich basketball state, obviously. Such a Texas feel on this team. You know, it's amazing that, that they got uh, they got some good athletes from Texas. You know, there's a lot of schools in Texas that, that would be recruiting them, so they've done a good job recruiting. Luke Phillips in the ballgame as well. Gonzalez in the corner, leading the conference in assist turnover ratio. Tries to get it down to Howell. 
He had stripped away from behind. Here comes Scott. I think Al got the ball, but then he thought he didn't know anybody was behind him. He got it over him. You know, Phillips, Phillips picks up a foul there. That will be on Luke Phillips. His first, the third on at ULM so far. Ten-point lead for Texas State. Almost eight minutes into this ball game. We'll play again tomorrow. You can catch it right here on ESPN Plus at 4 o'clock. Asbury comes to get it. Guarded by a smaller Ozier. Kick into the corner. Three on the way is a little bit short. Last touched by ULM. They say last touch by Howell. You may look at that during the break. Well, the reigning Sunbelt Conference Player of the Week off to a good start. Texas State has a 10-point lead here in Monroe. local attorney, not some slick lawyer from out of town pretending to be local. I see big money flashing on the screen. Is that real? What's the deal? Don't believe everything you see. Every case is different, and I'll fight to get you the money you deserve. I don't want to be pawned off on somebody else where I don't get to see the real attorney. I want a local attorney. We'll personally meet with you and be with you every step of the way. You can count on me because I'm right here with you. And with Creed and Creed, it's personal. I chose the online ULM program so I could still work while going to school, but also have the reputation and the accreditation that ULM provided. It was 10 years after I graduated high school that I finally graduated college. I loved that my two-year-old daughter was there. I was able to show her that you can work full-time and be a mom and still graduate, and she was in the stands cheering me on. You're watching the Sun Belt here on ESPN. Texas State up by 10. Much to the benefit of Caleb Asbury, the reigning Sun Belt Conference player of the week, and he's off to a great start this week, maybe trying to make it a second consecutive player of the week honor. Well, according to the first nine minutes, he's the front runner right now to, to win it again. He has the basketball right now, guarded by Ozier until he gets that matchup. He only gives up a little size, a really tough defender. Pass back towards the baseline, and you know, as Scott makes that jumper, one of the things we were told about this team is just they're so good in their offense and finding the right shot. They know, you know, they play within themselves, and I know that's something that, that uh, the, the former coach, Coach Casper, really, really taught up. Uh, he was coaching when I was coaching, so we've had a lot of uh, really good games. But th they're going to play hard, they're going to play aggressive, and they're going to take the shot that they, can, that they can hit. That was a dime from the top of the key from Josh Nicholas. And good job by Phillips. He has great hands, and he showcased it there to grab that basketball. But a no-look pass from Nicholas sets up Luke Phillips. And that was a great pass, and again, and he just traveled there. But Luke, Luke was looking for the ball, got it, and just went up strong with it. Michael Warren C on the floor, will check in for Nicholas, and then Harrison comes back for Thomas Howell. Almost halfway through this first half, and it just doesn't seem like this game has any sort of a rhythm so far. Well, no, and, and that's that's by design for Texas State. They don't want you to have a rhythm. You know, you, you, your own defense so long. You got a, an offensive foul by Luke Phillips. Your own uh, defense so long, you don't really have a chance to get into the, your offense. And then they're, they're aggressive. They're up trying to deny the ball and trying to make you make a mistake, not just let you make one. The foul was sort of coached over there from that Texas State bench, but... Ended up getting that call. 14 fouls against the ULM so far. 
you know, usually it's a little more to it that it's like he was just trying to get a hold of the ball and, and uh, hand it off. Davis looking down low. Shot clock is under 10 for Texas State here. Yeah, Caesar the with the offense, ball yeah. down in the post and we'll go back the other way is Nigel Caesar, the junior from Houston. He just dropped that. Uh, he just dropped that shoulder and went into uh, Phillips. He'll get a uh, seat back on the bench is Alonzo Sule, the redshirt sophomore from Houston as well. Checks back in. There's a good steal. Good read there by Adams, and he takes it coast to coast at a timeout called by ULM as the lead extends to 12. He was just sitting there in the starting blocks, and then just when they made the pass, he just went and got it. You know, one of the things that their head coach, Terrence Johnson, said after their win on Saturday against Little Rock was talking about Shelby Adams, not necessarily the most flashy guy, but... He said his ability to impact winning and inspiring his guys just selfless is unmeasured. Sometimes you need just need those glue guys, and he's one of those guys. He really is. Of course, Caleb Asbury so far nine points, three of four shooting, four rebounds. It really is a complete team, and you're seeing it. It's kind of hard to believe this team was picked fifth out of six teams in the West Division. Well, I know, you know, just from looking at the scores, as, as we did ourselves, the other teams was, was, was wondering about that, that pick and their decisions to pick them earlier when uh, they saw the, the results of those first four games. This will wrap up a six-game road trip for Texas State. I mean, you get the horrible news of a six-game road trip to start your conference play, and they're... Handled it so far pretty doggone well. You know, you, you know they, they had some issues uh, the, the same way as everybody else. And Marcy gets in and gets his bucket. Some more in C. Welcome back. He played in his first game on Saturday of conference play. Glad to have him back. He had two points in that ball game. Yeah, he had been out for a while and, and missed some playing time, and so I know uh, Coach Richard and the team is uh, really proud to have him back. And Harold back in running the point for Texas State, looking for Sule. Scott now feeds Sule. And the left hand as the shot clock goes off. It will not count. Good defensive possession there for ULM. Yeah, Phillips just held his ground, uh, stayed on the floor. And uh, <laughs> Sule made some great moves. It was just took a little too long. Sule's averaging eight points a game is checking out there. Quentin Scott, the senior from Cleburne, Texas. They are going to look at that. It seemed to off the naked eye that it was late, but as we know, we cannot, uh, we cannot say anything too early. <laughs> well, without, without the lights, it's more difficult. But I, I thought the, the buzzer sounded before he shot it. We'll get a look at what those officials are looking at right now. Yeah, it's at zero, still well in his hand. This should be a quick review. The basket is under review right now. Yeah, it's way, it's, it, was, it was way late. Yeah, that was a quick uh, review. We know it's, it's great that. Uh, yeah, it, you know it's great. That's the great camera work, and then getting us being able to see exactly the same thing that the officials see. So ULM will get the basketball. A turnover for Texas State. Both teams. Pretty solid job of taking care of the basketball so far. Fourth turnover for Texas State. You know, Texas State, I mean, you know, they're picking up full court now. They're going to put a, even a little more pressure on them instead of just half court. Just give them a chance to make some uh, mistakes or use some shot clock in the back court. Harrison yeah. gets the score, has the ball right now. Yeah, they've done a good job of stopping him. I was, we were thinking the same thing. Ozier, nifty drive, couldn't finish at the rim, though. A strong rebound by Small. We'll get it out. Davis will... Set things up. Both the point guards on the floor right now, Davis and Harrell. 
you know, when, when we got our our information about Texas State, I was looking at Small, and he's six eight and weighs 170 pounds, but he is athletic. Not a lot of beef on their side, but they're just big and long. Great, so many problems. Harrison fades, can't hit, but he will go to the free throw line where he was very successful last week in on the road at Arkansas State. He's not going to get anything easy. That'll send us to our under eight minute media timeout. Russell Harrison will have some free throws. When we come back is ULM still down by 10. First of two games this weekend between Texas State and ULM. Texas State on top. Well, good to see the ULM dance team back inside the Coliseum and the cheerleaders as well. That band in the house. I'm so glad when we can all gather together and enjoy sports. You know, it's good to see a few fans. We've got more fans here across from us. I don't know about behind us, but uh, more than we've had uh, recently. So it's a lot of interest and in people looking to do something. ULM team, even though they're, they're two and four in conference play, makes such a case for them being at least three and three in conference play, just the way the luck is gone. Harrison nails the first free throw, was fouled before the timeout. Harrison got to the line 15 times last week and hit 12 of those 15 free throws. It's both there. He's shooting 79%, seventh in the conference coming in, 86% so far in conference play. But he, I know, it probably feels funny to be at the free throw line with nobody on him because everywhere he's been so far tonight has been uh, small has been in his face. Texas State, their lead is eight. To the floor, Sule, and they thought that was going to be a, yeah, I thought that was going to be a travel when he. Scrapper Elijah Gonzalez. Ooh, it's a foul. Well, they did call a foul. Wow. Hmm. He came over the top yeah. of Sule. The way the way he went down and kind of looked like rolled, tried to roll over to protect the ball. A lot of times they'll call that a travel. Asbury already has nine points, misses that three. And Gonzalez leads ULM on the attack. A bounce pass. I think uh, he thought that Lawrence he was going to cut. He did not. 
Now, they were both just waiting to see. They were unsure what he was going to do, and then kind of got caught in the middle. Adams looking down low. Sule now kind of disengaged for a moment there. Good pump fake. And it's stripped away, knocked away by the much smaller Morency, and here comes ULM. Good turnover for Texas State. You know, the game so far is that three, if it went down, that would have cut the lead to five. Ozier, a little outside his range. Yeah, he just, uh, and he had somebody in his face, so he had to get it up over them. A little, it was a little difficult. Lob. Looking for small. He has it blocked by Efra Tui, and he saves it to Elijah Gonzalez. Yeah, that was a set play for that lob. Morency drives with the left hand. No tip, no good by Harrison. And a couple of uh, tough possessions there as a timeout is called by Texas State. Timeout, Bobcats. ULM is really... Broke down defensively, this Texas State offense. I think that's what this timeout is about, to, to uh, get them back into doing what they're supposed to be doing, reminding them, as he would say, reminding them who they are and how we play, and uh, just, just start working that clock a little more. Small got it down low, and Fertui just pinned it against the backboard. You know, Gonzalez was down there in his way. I think that was looking for, a, actually for a lob, maybe for a dump. And Gonzalez just got in his way. And how great is that for the big man to get the block, but also maintain possession exactly. for his team? Exactly, not knock it out of bounds and then give it to him again. And then, and then he saved it. I mean, you block it and then save it yourself. And for two, he came in 17 blocks on the year is 18th. That's sixth in the conference. It will be interesting to see what they do different now offensively after that timeout. Well, they do change the set. They got the double high. Down low, fade away as Ferry is good. That was a good cut off of a off of a cut. He cut off of it and used it as a running screen and uh, just knocked it down. He was the first in double figures with 11 points so far. Nicholas in the corner, Harrison. Trying to create his own shot. He'll take the three, which is short. ULM has been shooting the three ball much better, but they're having to be forced to take tougher threes here tonight. Yeah, they are. They're just, they're long and in their face, and they're having to really, really work to get a shot. You know, that's, that, that's tough when you have to work that hard to get a shot. Small will take a three, kind of a flat shot there. And ULM down by 10. With the basketball. You know, Nicholas back in the game. He ran that uh, rebound down. Everything is just tough for the Warhawks offensively. Lob down low. Harrison, a smaller defender, can't get the layup to go. Man, that was tough. That's tough. You know, I think he was he was probably looking for the defense, trying to get rid of it in a hurry before the defense could get there. Great pass. He just didn't didn't finish with it. Mason Harrell, the Oklahoman on the point gets it back from Asbury. It's a fun matchup. He against Gonzalez up top. Yeah, they're, they're moving and trying to isolate what in the end of the middle there, but after two, it was got a hand on it, but they still knocked it down. What a shot by Sule. I mean, Efra Tui did everything he was supposed to do, and he still made that long jumper. You know, you thought that would have been a little bit uh, out of his range, but you know, he just stepped out and knocked it down. That pass deflected. Asbury tripped up. But here comes Adams. There was a lot of passes. Almost got to where they were going. <laughs> Maybe too many passes. A little too unselfish. Nicholas on the breakaway. Lay oh, he can't get the go. That's three missed layups. <laughs> Point blank so far for the Warhawks. Yeah, it's got to be mental yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, you'd, you'd think he would have dunked that one. I think he thought the defense was there a little too quick. He was just trying to get it up ahead. Now with the athleticism of Josh Nicholas, he, he, he had different ways of finishing that in his head. You know, there's been about four minutes since ULM scored. Order by Harrell, no good. Sue Lake comes out with it. Corner three on the way. No good from, from Asbury. This is... Uh, this is just a, a hot mess right now. 
and stepping over there on the baseline. Was Gonzalez, I think it was last touch though by Texas State. When fadeaways in the corner are going, things are going right. That's the pace right now for the Bobcats. for a local attorney, not some slick lawyer from out of town pretending to be local. I see big money flashing on the screen. Is that real? What's the deal? Don't believe everything you see. Every case is different, and I'll fight to get you the money you deserve. I don't want to be pawned off on somebody else where I don't get to see the real attorney. I want a local attorney. We'll personally meet with you and be with you every step of the way. You can count on me because I'm right here with you. And with Creed and Creed, it's personal. I chose the online ULM program so I could still work while going to school, but also have the reputation and the accreditation that ULM provided. It was 10 years after I graduated high school that I finally graduated college. I loved that my two-year-old daughter was there. I was able to show her that you can work full-time and be a mom and still graduate, and she was in the stands cheering me on. Welcome back inside Fant Ewing Coliseum here in Monroe, Louisiana, Texas State. Out to a 3-1 starting conference play, leading the West Division of the Sun Belt. Up by a dozen alongside former ULM coach Mike Vining. I'm Chris Harris. 3-12 to go in the first half, and the score tells the story so far with the low scoring and the 12-point margin. You know... Texas State's averaging right at 70 points, and their uh, opponents is averaging about 65 a game for the year. But, uh, you know, ULM is just off to a horrible start offensively. I mean, even to the point of missing layups. Lob goes down low, and a travel is called. That's Nate Martin, a freshman who's in the ball game for Texas State, freshman from Cypress, Texas. You know, ULM did a great job of just bottling him up down there so that the, he didn't have anybody to pass it to and he couldn't get to the basket. Ozier, you see Thomas Howell back in for ULM. He had a big game on Saturday, 14 points, or rather 12 points on 5 of 5 shooting. Marcus Hall in the ball game also, and he draws a foul from Shelby Adams. Yeah, he just stuck that Number arm in there and tried to, tried to hold him out. His first foul. Actually, it was 14, not four. When Scott called for the foul. Only nine combined fouls with 2.33 to go in the half. See, it's tough when you can't get the ball in bounds. They just, they're just all over him, and I think that's why they keep running him in and out so they can put him. He's got his him again. <laughs> he, he had that off arm into his side then. So a offensive foul called on the freshman DeMarcus Hall. Well, the aggressiveness, but right there, set up to take that charge. Yeah, he was trying to get, he was trying to get past the defense, and then uh, just went too strong and wasn't able to pull up. Asbury still guarded by Ozier, and a travel called on Texas State. You know, they're setting a lot of screens right right now. They've got Martin setting them, number 11, Martin, and he's uh, he sets the first screen on the ball and he sets one off on the side looking for somebody to cut. And then Texas State's just doing a great job of denying an easy pass. They're making you work just to make the pass. Adams guarding Ozier as Howell has it. Double team comes and they'll call a foul on Adams. But well, they just attacked the ball when, when Howe got it inside. They just came after it. Adams has the assignment on Ozier. You see him slip off Ozier and commit the foul on Howe. Now a freshman from Natchitoches, Louisiana. 
you know, ULM is trying to get off of this, this scoring drought that they got going right now. Warren C up top. Ten on that shot clock. Wide open is Hall. They close out on him over there. And a travel is called. You know, they, they, when they come off that screen, they both jump the ball. You got to hit the man right then. Or if, if the defense drops to help the offside half, you got to swing it to get it out in that corner. And uh, if he just held it a little bit too long that time. Texas State up by 12. Their defense so far has been magnificent. Martin hands it off. Davis gives it right back to Harold. Trying to feed the big man Martin. And he threw it away. The freshman and it commits a turnover. Here comes Ozier, who can't finish at the rim again. That's four. Yeah, <laughs> them needs to have that goal checked. That's something, that's something ain't right with that goal. Harold. And now the shot by Quentin Scott goes. And the lead with less than a minute to play in the first half. It's largest at 14. ULM is, you know, it doesn't matter what they do. If they can't make the layup, that's going to be, it's going to be difficult for them. Halftime. Well, it can't come soon enough right now. Zier draws contact as he goes aggressively to the rim. And he'll go to the free throw line. You know, you know, Coach Richard is sitting over there wondering, you know, what do we got to do? What, what different shot have we got to get? At the line, Kareem Ozier, averaging 17 points so far in conference play and misses the first free throw. Junior from Racine, Wisconsin. He's fifth in the uh, conference in shooting 47% from the floor. And he's played a ton of minutes, third in minutes played in the conference. 34 minutes per game. You know, ULM is 0 for 7 in their last field goals, and now, they've, now they're have missing the free throws, too. Makes it makes for a long night. Asbury off the screen. And a one second differential shot clock game clock right now. And the drive is Davis into the corner. This offense is just so patient. That time maybe too patient. Yeah, they got a hand on it. They just need to come up with a bucket to start off the At second the buzzer. Half, right? No from Morency. And thank goodness for ULM, they're going to shoot on the other goal <laughs> right in there. the second half. As Texas State puts on a defensive clinic in that first half. And ULM will look to regroup here at halftime. Texas State, Asbury, the lone man in double figures. He has 11. ULM still within reach, though, even though only 13 points, they find themselves only down by 14 at halftime.
Half time here in Monroe, Louisiana. Texas State leads by 14 at the break. Well, it's been a tumultuous year. Imagine being a first-year president. That's the case for Dr. Ron Berry here at ULM. We had a chance for the first time to talk with him. Let's see what's some of the good things going on here at ULM. Hello, I'm Ron Berry, president of the University of Louisiana Monroe. COVID has certainly had a huge impact on our university, but uh, we, from day one, uh, started with uh, requiring masks, uh, social distancing, uh, making sure that everyone was following proper hand hygiene and covering their coughs and sneezes. Uh, most of our buildings have uh, one entry, one exit. Uh, our hallways are marked one way. Uh, we're doing everything we can to make sure that uh, our university remains a safe place to study and learn and live. Um, we do have uh, people living on campus, students living on campus, which is exciting. Uh, we're able to maintain a safe environment for our on-campus students. Our dining halls are working well, uh, maintaining uh, great, healthy, nutritious meals for our students and a safe environment. Uh, we have protocols in place. We have a daily checker that uh, asks students to report their daily uh, symptoms if they have any, and then we have folks that reach out to them to provide guidance on the best approach for them to stay healthy. Um, we have partnered with uh, the Louisiana National Guard, who will be on our campus uh, for part of this semester, offering free testing. Uh, for anyone on campus or off campus who would like to receive that testing. Uh, as we know, identification of uh, COVID patients is critical to keeping the rest of us safe. Moving forward, what are we looking for? Uh, we've started a strategic planning process and uh, that will help set the direction for the university. Uh, we have had over 60 forums that included uh, people from uh, both on campus and in the community. Uh, where we've had discussions asking people uh, what are the strengths of ULM, what are the weaknesses, what opportunities exist for ULM to grow, and more importantly, what direction should ULM go in. Uh, we're currently in the process of uh, transcribing all of that data. Uh, we collected over three days worth of recordings, so over 36 hours of taped meetings where people shared their ideas and thoughts about the future of ULM. So we'll gather all that information and we'll have a series of committees that will work together uh, to create a future for ULM. But, you know, honestly, the future for ULM is going to be the same as it always been. We're going to be that transformative entity that helps pull this region and all of our citizens up to new levels. We're going to provide opportunities for people to have better careers, better lives, and better futures. We want to be the engine that brings companies to our region. We want to create opportunities for businesses to grow and develop, develop here. Uh, so a lot going on. Uh, it'll be done differently, but the mission of our university will remain the same. As a university, we're going to continue to transform lives in our region by providing outstanding educational opportunities uh, for everyone in our region. Well, it's halftime here in Monroe, Louisiana. Texas State leads by 14. We'll have some halftime stats and more coming up right after this.
halftime here in Monroe, Texas State. Up by 14 on ULM as we take a look at our first half stats. Looks like Coach Vining, Coach Mike Vining, former ULM head coach, Chris Harris, and uh, well, uh, sometimes numbers speak for themselves. It, it does. You know, 29%, you know, no matter who you're playing, what they're shooting. You know, then they got 46% and one for four from three, and that's something ULM has done well. They're getting out rebound 18 to eight. As you can see, it's just tough turnovers, you know, are about the same, are the same. So that, that 29% is a whole story. ULM has a scoring drought at halftime of seven minutes, 58 seconds. They missed their last seven shots of the first half. Here's a stat of the highlights from Texas State in the first half and a lot from the defending Sunbelt Player of the Week, Caleb Asbury. Led the way with 11 points, four of seven shooting and five rebounds. But he's doing everything. You know, he just goes to the, to the basket, gets a rebound, puts it back in, pulls up and shoot from outside. He just does a good job. Shelby Adams, kind of the glue guy on their team, comes up with a big steal here, and they, they find a great way of turning their defense into offense. Well, they do. You know, their pressure defense leads to their offense. And, of course, uh, Asbury can do it, really, a three-level score on offense. Now for ULM, really was a good start for Chris Efratui. It was, you know, that was a little far for him, but he was able to get it to go and, and was just active. Lozier broke a big scoring drought about midway through that first half with that bucket. Josh Nicholas with the only three of the first half for ULM. And so some good defense there for ULM. And Coach, they just have to find a way to find some confidence offensively for ULM. Well, they do. You know, they've, they've missed some awful easy shots. They just got to make those go. Around the conference, everybody's playing. No canceled games as you take a look around the conference. App State up late there. That's an interesting score. Arkansas State up by four. Little Rock on top as well as Georgia Southern. Halftime, second half coming your way right after this.
second half getting set to start here in Monroe, Louisiana. Texas State by 14. We were just commenting during the break, Coach Vining, about, you know, down by 14, only scored 13 points, but still in this ball game. But it's not over. You know, the, the, the things that ULM done, it just the ball just didn't go in the basket for them. They played hard. Uh, they, they've had the 11 turnovers, but also they've caused 11 turnovers. So they were even with that, it's just a shooting percentage. And when you miss three layups in a half, you know, that's 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 tough and it's hard to overcome that. The team's going with their starting fives to begin the second half. Download Sule. We'll get it right back. One up against Effort two, and he has it taken away. Here comes Olenade and ULM. Have the numbers. Ozier corner three. Oh, that's big for the confidence for the Warhawks. That stops a streak of almost eight and a half minutes without a made bucket. Well, we found out what was wrong. We was on the wrong end. Alongside Coach Mike Vining, I'm Chris Harris here at Fant Ewing Coliseum in Monroe. Glad to have you with us here on ESPN+. Plus. You know, ULM's got a little bit more energy right now. I know they. it was probably uh, smoking in that uh, dressing room at halftime. Small pulls up a deep two is good over Harrison. He elevates for the bucket. Five points for Small. You know, he just put it on the floor and went up and scored. He just, that was just a good basketball move. That was here, knocked down that triple. Averaging 17 points in conference play. Nifty pass for Efra Tui. It's blocked at the rim by Small. And Texas State takes possession. Lob ahead. Small is fouled. Looks like got that on the Harrison was trying to go up with it, but just got caught in a bad place. Foul number 24 for the Warhawks, Russell Harrison. Nobody really in foul trouble on either side so far. Small to the free throw line. The senior from Jersey City, New Jersey. In the Seward County Community College. You see on the screen a 52% free throw shooter. But man, he's he, he's active. And I mentioned earlier, he's he's 6'8 and weighs 170 pounds, but he he gets around well. Started every game last year as a junior. And he splits the pair. He's now 8 for 13 in conference play. At the charity strike, lead back to 14. You're trying, get, you're trying to get the post involved a little bit again. Ball movement much better. Offensive rebound for Efred Tui. ULM was minus 10 in the rebounding in the first half, and Harrison has his first three of the ball game. Leads the team and made threes his first tonight. And I know that's a welcome sight for Coach Richard, too, to see those two guys, especially Harrison, get, uh, get unwound. Harold penetrates and gives to Small. Was shooting around those elbows and a really, really nice rebound by Russell Harrison. Pulls it down amongst the crowd. Well, there was a lot of contact all over that. It was like they were just bumping all the way down the floor. You kept waiting for somebody to get a foul called on them. Riding him all the way from coast to coast. Harrison got the rebound and had to fight them all. One thing uh, those guys said, they really talked about having to play tough against this Texas State team. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Richard reminded, reminded them of that at halftime. Harrison, fade away, well off the mark. He had to work a little hard to get that shot. Harold, really nice. No look pass to small misses, but fouled by Efra Tui. Something's wrong with that basket. Everything from close won't go down. <laughs> He was just a little late getting to it. They did a good job of getting the ball to him. Not a whole lot of contact there. Yeah, he, he, he might have hit the top of the ball, but he I didn't. Might have grazed his arm, yeah, but. The hand wasn't up there. Interesting call there. Just flat out missed it, but he nails the free throw. Small has seven points, two of three at the line to go along with three rebounds and two assists. And 
Nails them both. Texas State trying to pull away in the free throw department. Five out of six. Lead is 13. You know, another one since uh, since Nichols hit that first three that he took, uh, he hasn't hadn't been on the board yet. So you know, I know Coach Richard and ULM's looking to get him going too. Ball was deflected out of bounds by Asbury. Harrison hands off for Ozier. Ozier will be fouled on the floor by Adams, who has that assignment today. That's his second. Team foul number one of the second half. Marco Marinci back in for ULM for Chris Efratui. They'll go small Man, here, Coach. Yeah, what do you think? They're going real small. I, I haven't seen that in a while. You know, usually he goes with Phillips or either uh, Howell. Harrison step back three. It was a nice looking shot, but it just wouldn't go down. Yeah, that looked good. That looked good all the way. It just didn't go. I think maybe Coach Richard is trying to get a little more aggressiveness, athleticism, uh, movement. Uh, maybe he's not going, not going to be uh, trying to work the post and just get everybody involved all over the court. Don't call Harrison. Really tough on Russell Harris. He turns into your five in this lineup, and he fouls Sue Lay down there on the block. His second. Yeah, there been help a, from Nicholas. Yeah, there had been a lot of pushing and shoving before that. Harrell into the corner. They're working around now, bounce pass into Sue Lay. They're trying to feed him since he has the height advantage. That one in and out. Man, he went up and shot it down, looked like. Spinning is Olenady as it rejected. Rejected by Asbury. Harold gives off for Small, who puts it in. That one went down. That was a good pass, and Small was looking for it. And turning defense into offense again for Texas State. Largest lead now at 15. Tough drive. Now Olenade spots. Can't hit. And Texas State going to slow it down a bit. Yeah, they pushed it, but, you know, but it's been it's been working for them. When they had the numbers, they've just gone with it and attacked a lot quicker. Harrell has an open lane, and he lays it in, and Coach Richard of ULM calls a timeout. Lead balloons to its largest 17 in Texas State. And Harrell, along with Small, not playing small tonight.
Caleb Asbury, the reigning Sunbelt Conference Player of the Week, doing it on both ends of the floor so far tonight. Texas State leads by 17. You know, Asbury's got 11 points, and then he's he's also part of the reason that ULM's not scoring. Is, so he is playing well. And he's got some decent hair, too. He does. He does. That's the look you used to have, right? <laughs> I don't know if I'd have never cut my hair if I'd have that much hair. You know, one thing that was brought up was about teams with experience are excelling this year more than teams with newcomers is Nicholas underneath. Gets good position, draws a foul, and we'll have to hold that thought because we're heading to a media timeout after the foul against Josh Nicholas. That was on Asbury, by the way. Good to see the technical fouls back in the house. I chose the online ULM program so I could still work while going to school, but also have the reputation and the accreditation that ULM provided. It was 10 years after I graduated high school that I finally graduated college. I loved that my two-year-old daughter was there. I was able to show her that you can work full time and be a mom and still graduate, and she was in the stands cheering me on. Engine in a car wreck during the weekend? Call Christian Creed. I did. He's local and ready to help you 24-7. What are you waiting for? Christian Creed is all you need. If you're going to make one call, make it count. Call Creed and Creed today. We are the only campus in the state that has a body of water running through it, so it's pretty cool because you get to kayak on it. Every day I park on the other side of campus, so I get to just walk across the bridge, walk across the bayou, and it's really cool because I get to just, you know, kind of see the whole beauty and, you know, see all the turtles that I'm walking by and stuff, and it's a lot of fun. Engine in a car wreck during the weekend? Call Christian Creed. I did. He's local and ready to help you 24-7. What are you waiting for? Christian Creed is all you need. If you're going to make one call, make it count. Call Creed and Creed today. When I see you, I see early mornings and the talks about that day's adventure. I see wonder. The sparkle of discovery in your eyes is beautiful. I see the excitement of the game in your expression and hear the joy of the moment. I see boldness. It amazes me that you're not afraid to try new things. When I see you, I see my baby. When I see you, I see the best. Look at ULM head coach Keith Richard, his 11th season here at ULM. His squad down by 17, but still 15 26 to go in this one. You know, we, we heard about Texas State. They're 3 and 1. Their numbers, their tempo is slow. They play good defense. What have been your, your observations so far, Coach? Well, everything that they talked about, they're doing. You know, ULM, the, the players you mentioned, was talking about they, they're tough. They. they run their offense well they play tough defense they'll body up to you we haven't seen a lot of that either they do make contact but uh they're, they've just shot the ball well also in ulm the big thing to me is ulm just hasn't been able to get one to go even the easy ones nicholas at the line the senior from long beach new york this is the second and of course asbury runs down the rebound you know, when ULM gets a free throw, they need to make them because they, they're they not getting a whole lot of them. This is Adams who gives it up for Sule. Off the screen, Harrell. Not about the corner three. Asbury will take the deep one. And it goes over the backboard and will head back to ULM. What we were talking slightly before the break was about teams with experience. See Marlon Davis check in for Texas State. You know, teams with experience are, are excelling this year. We were talking the break about Kentucky being 4-10 and 10 and how this year, how it's been so crazy, those experienced teams have done well. Well, you know, they've made adjustments. They've been able to make adjustments. And, you know, new players coming in, they've got to adjust to being here in the first place or away from home or from wherever they were before. A big block there with uh, by Nicholas, but it goes out of bounds. But, uh, you know, the guys that have been here go through it. Uh, 
they, they just were able to, to withstand the changes, and it, it's, a, it's a level of maturity is, is what it looks like to me, and it's, and it's all, over, uh, all over the country right now. A couple of great blocks. Quentin Scott on one end and then Nicholas on the other. Look at inside. Right-handed hook shot will roll around and go. It's Nigel Caesar who's back in the ballgame, the junior from Houston, Texas. One of four guys who transferred to Texas State from Collin College. Top of the key three for Nicholas. He elevates so much on those threes. Fighting for the loose ball, Phillips, but Texas State comes away. Pull up for Harrell. It's good. Mason Harrell extends a Texas State lead to 20. That's one of the quicker shots that they've taken. It wasn't a layup also, but he drilled it. And a moving screen to be called on Phillips. That's the second time he's been called for that is Thomas Howell will enter for Phillips. You know, sometimes part of that's a ball handler. You know, you, you, you leave a little too quick before you get set, and then you're still moving. You know, when you're setting the screen, you want to make sure you set a good one. Travel called on Marlon Davis. Graduate. Davis graduated with a degree in general studies, already pursuing his master's, Texas State. You know, we've we mentioned uh, to end the first half, ULM went on about a seven-minute scoring drive. Right now, they're on a four-and-a-half-minute scoring drive for field goals. As you're looking into Howe, all the help defense from behind. Floater by Renzi, no good. But Al called, and he'll head to the free-throw line. That was on Caesar underneath, and... A good job by Morrency to stay with his shot. He went in strong. We just got tangled up. You know, as we've learned with 13-21 to go in this one, see Marco Morrency's numbers at the line, 9 of 15. First is good. There's a lot of momentum that carries over from the last few minutes of the games on Friday into Saturday. It is. You know, they, they kind of you start off usually trying to kind of feeling each other out, and then the next day you've got everything worked out. You just make some adjustments or some corrections depending on how you played. And uh, it's been, you know, some of them has been two wins, and but there's been an awful lot of splits in those two days, as you would probably expect. Harold going up against Gonzalez, high up off the glass and in. <laughs> that was a that was a tough shot. It's been impressive. Only six points, but also has three rebounds and three assists to go along with it. Morency. Now to Nicholas. And a blocking foul will be called. And he'll go back to the line. I think the foul on Caesar. Yeah, he was standing directly under the basket. This third is the only player in both teams that really has foul trouble, the only with three. And Nicholas did a good job of getting to the basket and was trying to avoid the contact and make it the, uh, <laughs> he didn't make it and he didn't avoid the contact. Kind of scooped instead of went up. Stronger is Asbury. The junior checks out of the ball game. One more for Josh Nicholas, who's been fantastic in conference play for ULM. He makes the second free throw and has six points. ULM extending their defense to full court here. Mm, that's, a, that's a chance to get a turnover right there. They did a good job of getting it out of that trap, but ULM just couldn't get over there quick enough to pick it up. That was a good screen they set then. They're going to reset 15 on the shot clock. Gets that screen into a triple team. Passes out of it now. Gonzalez got his hand on it. Morency comes away to Gonzalez, three on two. That was a scramble. There was Luke Phillips. I mean, that's how. A wide open under the basket. They just couldn't find him. Everything really went right there. They're still there by Morency. You know what Gonzalez is like defensively. Top steal guy in the conference. Corner three will go for Mason Harrell. 
starting to put together a really nice line. Or excuse me, that was Scott, not Harrell. Scott has seven. And now Gonzalez answers with a three. He back under 20 at 19. This is a six-minute scoring drought. Field goal scoring drought for changing, ULM. Yeah, they're changing up some, something they didn't get set up like they wanted to. You know, Harrell's getting them into it. Back in the corner, Davis penetrates, and that one somehow was able to hang in. Their team only two averaging double figures, a timeout called by Keith Richard, but you have six averaging at least eight points. On their roster, they get everybody into it. They are. High up off the window, Harrell in Texas State, up by 19. Fans here inside Fent Ewing Coliseum. There's uh, Dr. Ron Berry and athletic director Scott McDonald. He's had a busy uh, few weeks hiring Terry Bowden as his new head football coach. They had a nice event on Monday on Martin Luther King Day to introduce him. Tim Brando was here. That was a great event. You know, they couldn't get a lot of people here because of the, of the virus. Sure. Uh, and the limit of how many could go, but it was a great event. They streamed it, and it got a lot of coverage. They did a really good job with it. Harrell still at point, gets that screen from Caesar. Harrell's very active. He's made some great passes. And a good block from behind from Howell. And as Caesar rolled to the rim. He pins it, and they'll call a change of possession and give the ball to ULM. You know, how just he's always around the basket. He may not have big numbers, but he's always around the basket. He didn't get the uh, shot clock started, looked like. That's just a perfect block yep. from, from behind. Just right between his arms and slam the ball. Blocking shots. It's good. It's good to be tall, but it's also good to have timing. And to have good position. Yeah, timing is, is, is great. You know, that, you, it's almost to, to, to get the rebound and to uh, get that block, it's almost kind of like volleyball. you got to just get up there at the right time. Good idea there, but another steal for Texas State. Yeah, Hal got a hand on it. He never did really control it. 
Free throw line jumper falls for Marlon Davis, the 6'2 graduate from Houston, Texas. Quickly down the floor, Nicholas is fouled at the rim. Followed by Howell, will count. Nice strong follow, though. A couple of nice dunks in that series last weekend at Arkansas State. Caesar the foul, his fourth. Well, he's been he's been active on defense, but he's picked up those four fouls. We haven't had many fast breaks in the game tonight. That was one of them. Well, and you know they, they really hadn't hadn't been able to score off of the break itself. They've got some uh, couple of free throws, but in the first half, I know it was two or three inside. Just wasn't able to get to go down. See the subs, Nate Martin coming in. Isaiah Small for Texas State. Remo Zier for ULM. Makes a second, so Josh Nicholas. You know, ULM got those free throws, but they're, they're only one for nine in the last nine shots. See so what's going on around the conference there on the left side of your screen. Arkansas State, the top of Louisiana. That's a tough place to play down there in Lafayette. Just Southern. Tell you what, this conference is wide open, especially when you're playing these back to backs on the weekends. Easy job there at Texas State to break that pressure. Just past the halfway mark here in this second half. 21 point lead for Texas State. A foul underneath called on Nicholas. Guarding uh, Nate Martin down low. Martin was trying to pin him and hold him, and uh, Nicholas was trying to fight around. Usually you'll, you'll grab him to pull him back when you're trying to get around in front, and uh, they, they got caught. You know, yesterday the young men that we, we visited with were talking about it, it, it gets down to just mental toughness, you know, that, that second day and late in the ball game and knowing, you know, they, they made the trip and come in to play and then uh, staying on the road and then got to play again tomorrow. Fade away two, no good that time from Harrell. You are limited a hurry and frenzy. Like a flash on your screen lays it in. Yeah, I kept looking to see if he was going if he was going to cast it ahead, but he he kept it and just finished it. You know, nice. one of the few finishes off the break your limbs had. Good to see that one go down for a Warhawk down low. Small gives it across the block to Martin. And Nicholas deflects it out of bounds. You have a couple of freshman big men in the ball game. Nicholas active on both sides of the floor. You have Martin, who's a freshman, and Hal, a freshman. Two big men. They're going to be battling in this conference for quite some time. <laughs> they, they will, and, and they're, they're active in there, too. They both want the ball. Tough shot there. No good from Harold again. Ozier for Nicholas. I always thought about it. You know, how was how was running the floor looking for it, and uh, they weren't able to get it to him, and then Marcy just had the three. It just didn't go for him. Once again, that four-guard lineup with Howell. 6-8, running the five against Martin. 49-30 is your score. 8.22 to go in this second half. Well, that Gonzalez. Gonzalez on the small right now, 6'8". It is hand-to-hand -hand combat in the low <laughs> post right, right there. <laughs> they, were, they were going after it, both of them. You know, they're, they're wanting playing time, and they're fighting for it. Four on the shot clock here for Texas State. Martin goes up strong. How good defense. As we approach the eight-minute mark here in this ballgame, Nicholas... Looking down low for Howe, threw it away. And that will send us to the under eight minute media timeout. 7.59 to go, 49 to 30 is your score. Texas State on top here in Monroe.
to the Texas State bench. The Texas State Bobcats on top 49 to 30 over ULM. First six conference games for Texas State on the road. Their two scheduled home games were canceled or postponed because of COVID with Arkansas State. And they're off to a three and one start. Only loss at overtime loss to the Raging Cajuns down in Lafayette. Yeah, I think, you know, two of their first eight games were supposed to be at home and they lose the two home games. So that really makes it tough. But if anybody's made the most of it, they certainly have. A lot of scoreboard at the bottom of the screen, screen for now. So I'll do it kind of radio style as shot from down low is good from Isaiah Small. 51-30, 7.40 to go. In this one, Gonzalez to the bucket. Second chance, third offensive rebound. Corner three, that time is good for Marco Morinci. You know, March is getting a, a lot more playing time now that he's, I guess he's got back and got, got settled in. And he's a, a more athletic, bigger guy, bigger guard than, than what uh, the other guys are. He has eight points on three of seven shooting. Had two on Saturday, his first game back with the team. It's a block by Hal, his second block down low. And right there, Small to pick it up and put it in. It was Sule who was blocked by Hal. He just has that instinct for the basketball. He just he came from nowhere and just got, got all ball. Lead back to 20, 53-33. Gonzalez, shot clock down. Wide and open, great job of getting it to him. <laughs> Good find, Morinci. Down low, he's in double figures with 10. Yeah, they were crossing, <laughs> crossing down there, and uh, they went, two people went with the same one. They didn't talk on defense, and Marcy was just wide open on the basket. He just, he was just wondering if they were going to get it to him in time. Davis running the point right now for Texas State. And Sule has it taken away. Here comes Ozier on the break. Gives for Gonzalez. Perfect setup. A little bit short on the three. Great idea. Just didn't get it to go. Asbury the rebound. Asbury now sitting still at 11 points. He hasn't scored in the second half. But he has eight rebounds. And a good feed down low. No finish by Sule, but a late whistle. And the foul will be on Gonzalez down low on the six foot seven Sule. Yeah, he must have he must have pushed him down low. I, I missed what happened up high. Second foul on Gonzalez. 16 foul for ULM. 53-35 is your score at the line. Alonzo Sule. He misses the first free throw. 82% free throw shooter on the way in as Harold checks back in for Davis. One more time for Sule, the redshirt sophomore. This is the second. And Gonzalez wrangles the rebound there, his second of the ball game. So he trying to get get Harrison set up in the corner over there, and they did a good job. He split those. March he did, and wasn't able to finish. Kind of like what you've seen from both Nicholas and Morenci for really being aggressive and, and pushing the issue. Yeah, he's come back. Uh, March has come back, come back strong, and he's uh, he's going to be a big boost. Uh, you know, they, they did miss him when he was out. 53 to 35, 5:32 to go. And a wave of a magic wand, and boom, your score bug is back. 53-36, Texas State. Sule out of the ball game. One more time for Marco Marinci. He's in double figures with 11 points. Misses the second free throw. 17-point game. You know, ULM just, just hasn't had a very good offensive night. You know, shooting 30% from the field and only 64% from the free throw line. As Barry still looking for the first points of the second half. Pass deflected by Ozier out of bounds. It will stay with the Bobcats. 
You know, Zier and Gonzalez has done a good job defensively, too. They've got their hands on a lot of balls, and, and they've come up with uh, six steals uh, team-wise. Press with uh, Mason Harrell, the 5'9", 145-pound point guard. Fade away with the shot clock winding down, no good. And Caesar, who missed the shot, comes down with the chase down. Harrison tried to get to Gonzalez, and it, uh, before he could get a hold of it, he did hit a knee or a foot. That's tough when you work that hard to get the ball and then got to go back and do it all over again. As Barry elevates for three short. And Caesar, very active, but couldn't grab that board, but showing a lot of hustle. You know, you know we... With, uh, with a good lead, he's still out there just battling for every second. You know, these last four and a half minutes may not win this game, but create a lot of momentum for tomorrow. That was tough. You know, it was a, it was a bad pass to March that he was able to get it, but he wasn't able to do anything with it, and that leads to the basket. <laughs> That's just how they drew it up. Ozier with the bucket. A quiet night for Kareem. Seven points on two of seven shooting. Four rebounds, two assists, though. Or the junior from Racine, Wisconsin. Well, that looked kind of like that hidden ball trick in baseball. <laughs> <laughs> and the twos battle near midcourt and a foul called on Ozier guarding Caleb Asbury. Final media timeout of the ball game. It's been a grind type of a game. Texas State up by 15. Texas State looking for a fourth consecutive victory. There are right now three minutes, 58 seconds, possibly away from that. As they are the road warriors in the Sun Belt so far, every conference game has been on the road. They put together a pretty impressive uh, outing so far here tonight. Alongside Coach Mike Vining, 400 plus wins here at ULM as the head coach, Chris Harris with you. Yeah, they missed that one, and then ULA was able to come down with it. But, when, again, you just can't say enough about uh, how Texas State has, has fought through uh, their schedule. Lorenzi, a long two. This has been his game. He has a Baker's dozen now, 13 points on five of nine shooting. Full court press, lead down to 13. You know, he's been one of the few bright spots offensively. 7-0 run for ULM. They get four of their last five shots. Gathering some momentum. Bounce pass down low. Caesar spins. My got away with a the travel there. And a good defensive stand. You know, Howe was in his face. He, he had to fight to get it up there. You know, March is working on it again. Looked like the, that was a foot, I thought. Well, advice turnover there. Harrell goes to the rim. Gives for Small, who is fouled. 
You know what's coming up for Texas State? They'll uh, put together a celebration when they come home on January 29th. But it's tomorrow, 4 o'clock. You can catch it right here on ESPN+. Plus. 4 o'clock tomorrow, then they have that four-game homestand. Against Louisiana and Little Rock. Small misses the first. And Marlon Davis checks back in for head coach Terrence Johnson's club. You know, he's he's working on, uh, you know, getting his guys in there, reminding them what they're supposed to do. And again, they've got another game tomorrow. So you, you don't just celebrate this one. You just finish it out strong and get ready to come back and do the same thing again tomorrow on his side. And, you know, of course, Richard's got to they got to get this one out of their system and come back with their offensive uh, game on on uh, going go tomorrow. So they drop back into a little zone right now. Just give them a different look to finish up the game, and you know, and possibly give them something to think about tomorrow. Corner three for Marinci is good. You know, we saw a game similar to this for ULM from Josh Nicholas. Against UT Arlington, Fallon Ozier, by the way, they'll shoot one and one. Kind of getting the same thing from from uh, Marinci tonight. You know, that's uh, that's 15 for him. He just lighting it up. Texas State tomorrow for ULM, then four game road trip. Rock in to Arlington. And we're going to spend most of February away from home. We talked about ULM having to play the final few weeks of conference play on the road after starting at home. Harold makes the front end of the one and one. He'll have another. Came in as an 82% free throw shooter, fifth best in the conference. Well, he's played well. He's kept them under control, doing the things that they want to do, kept the ball under control, and his team under control. He's ran it well. Harold, the junior from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Going back to ULM schedule, Coach, I remember talking a lot back in the non-conference when we had ULM non-conference games about starting out at home in conference play, and then you see it backloaded with a lot of a lot of road games. Well, that's tough, you know. So you really couldn't tell early about who was winning, who was leading the league, because with so many at home and so many out the road, and you know, unfortunately now ULM is. You know, looks like they're going to lose this game, and then they got to go back on the road and play some of these teams that they've already lost to at home. Should be some fun matchups back at home when they can finally head back to San Marcos. Which they split with Louisiana the first time. The loss was in overtime, and of course, last weekend swept Little Rock on the road. It's turned a lot of eyes nationwide about this Texas State team. But coming up with those wins, not just the wins, but where they were, uh, meant a lot. And so they're staying in their zone again. Now just trying to push ULM out. They got Harrison on the free throw line. They're going to have to get it inside. The ball movement. Harrison down low. A lot of traffic. Texas State comes away with it. Team that has nine steals tonight, hitting their average so far in conference play. You know, they talked earlier about keeping teams under 60 points. They've, uh, they've done a great job defensively here tonight. Final two minutes. This is game number 14 for Texas State, number 13 for ULM, a turnover there. Morency feeling confident right now as it deflected out of bounds. And that Ozier was spotting up over here in the corner. He was looking for a cross-court pass. He was open. But Marcia was trying to get it to the basket. See Texas State shooting 47% came in, one of the top shooting teams in the conference. The streak will continue of holding their opponent under 60, it looks like. You know, it's, ULM is just doing a lot of dribbling. they got to move the ball around. Of the uh, Texas State's back in the man now. Gonzalez underneath. He recovered and put together a good reverse. He lost it and just fought through it and got it and put it back up and was able to get it in. You know, ULM just, just trying to get him a chance to, to make a mistake with it. Five points for Elijah Gonzalez as we've reached the one-minute mark in this ballgame. 
You know, they're just going to run the clock now. There's no reason for ULM to just foul them. You know, ULM will get at least one more possession, possibly two. Foul on how underneath, fighting with Nigel Caesar, the junior. Six foot eight versus six foot eight down low. Well, Coach Vining, as we will turn the page to game two of this weekend series, your thoughts on both teams? What, what will preparation look like for the next uh, 20 hours? But, you know, Texas State is just going to try to duplicate what they've done, you know, just continue to play the same way. Then uh, ULM, you know, they've got a lot to talk about. They've got to shake it off. They've got to get their confidence back offensively. And th that's the biggest thing is just offensive confidence and being tough with the ball. You know, and they talked about that uh, yesterday, the players, just we've got to be tough with the ball. I'll tell you what, Marco Morenci has been a uh, – Worth the fresh air here tonight. Lead is down to 10. 20 seconds to go. Ozier oh, can't get the pass there. That kind of that kind of caps <laughs> ULM's luck on offense. Uh, you know he's, he's wide open. He, he just got to get the ball and and he just can't he can't get to it. it the pass wasn't there. The uh, junior from Mount Verdon, New York, Marco Marinci has played well. But he's seven for 11 from the field and two for three from three points. So he, he's really come back with a bang. Well, after scoring 13 points in the first half, ULM scores 34. They outscore Texas State in the second half. And uh, maybe some momentum for ULM side. Well, it is. I mean, you know, they, can, they can look at the mistakes they made, the missed layups, the missed easy shots, the missed pass that we just saw at the end of the game here. Those things all can be corrected, and then you got a ball game. So the thing is, if they played hard, they didn't get their head down and stay down. Texas State picks up their 10th win of the year, their fourth win in a row. They're now 10-4, and 4-1 in conference play. ULM drops to 4-10. and 10. They're 2-5 and five in conference play. For Coach Mike Viney, our producer Wayne Gentry, I'm Chris Harris saying so long from Monroe, Louisiana, where our final score, Texas State 57, ULM 47. All games airing on the ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. <laughs>